Welcome to a brand new episode of Cup of EO, the tea break size podcast that gets to the heart of the important topics in the world of voiceover. Expect candid stories, top tips and sage advice as I chat with expert guests who are at the top of their game in the voiceover industry. I'm your host, Kimberly Parker, tea addict and VOpreneur. And this week, I'll be spilling the tea on superpowers, including how to harness yours to elevate your business. Oh, goodness me. Well, I wear a cape every day in the studio, doesn't everyone? I have a five-year-old son, so it would be remiss of me not to mention superheroes somewhere in this podcast. I swear he's obsessed. And all the talk of flying and daydreaming about how he would save the world got me thinking. We've all got superpowers. We just need to find out what they are and learn how to harness them. After learning about how many of my VO colleagues got into this industry and what their previous backgrounds were career-wise, it got me thinking about all the transferable skills that we develop throughout our lives, whether through employment or via our hobbies, and how these can affect and impact our businesses as voiceover artists. When you think of voiceover, you think of a person with a nice or interesting voice, But in all honesty, that's such a small part of the business. As any singer will tell you, having a great voice will only get you so far, which is why TV talent shows have been so popular. If you don't have the other skills needed to run a business, then you might find it tough going. We all have transferable skills. What skills do you have that you can apply to your VO business? When you change careers, you very rarely start from scratch. I spent over a decade working in marketing, advertising and social media before making the leap to VO, and I've seen a lot of fellow voiceover artists with a wide-ranging career history. My marketing background has helped me immensely in being able to hit the ground running and get clients on board fast. My copywriting experience means I can spot when something doesn't work in a script and suggest something that flows better. My experience working in advertising helped me understand the process of writing and receiving creative briefs, managing client expectations and developing strong relationships with everyone you encounter in your business. What I've found in speaking to many VOs over the years is that not all of them are trained actors or experienced radio presenters. If you're just starting out or looking to make the move to VO, one of the first things I'd recommend is working out what transferable skills you've developed that will help you build your voiceover business. Once you've worked that out, you can use those skills to your advantage. Let's hear what some of this week's guests have to say about their superpowers. Introducing voiceover artists Claire Reeves, Sam Boffin, Lizzie Jobling and Abby Phillips. I've included more information about all of them in the show notes, so be sure to check those out after the episode. Oh, goodness me. Well, I wear a cape every day in the studio, doesn't everyone, you know? (laughs) Um, I think a superpower for me, if I can go back to sort of early local radio days, was I learn everything about broadcasting from the very, very bottom. Okay, so way before I got into the world service and I was sound engineering, I started, I had to do this bulk erasing of quarter inch tapes where you had to take these old tapes, splice them all together to make bigger old tapes, and then you'd whack them over this electromagnetic thing that went zzz at you to clean the tapes. So then you would put them in the box and someone else could use them. And it was good recycling, I guess. Um, so starting with jobs like that... Um, That sounds mad and that sounds largely irrelevant, but I think what it gives me as a superpower is a real understanding of A, audio um, in in, in its really basic form of, uh, you know, little bits of magnetic fields on tapes, but also a real understanding of broadcasting and the business of media from the very, very bottom. And things that I do now 
will still have the legacy of that stuff within them. So I know what people's problems are that we're trying to solve. I know their world, why they need that voice over the way that they do and how quickly they need it. And a consciousness of the audiences. And I suppose from that very start of bulk arrays and quarter inch tapes, that gave me a foundation to build upon, to be a very conscious media person, I suppose, um, and really empathise, be able to talk the language. So I would say that actually, probably that's my biggest VO superpower, because you know, I'm like hard relate to everything in media. And I worked in television as well. So it does have an impact weirdly on the way that I voice, but also in the way that I work with my clients and have an understanding of their worlds. It runs really, really deep in me. And I value that very highly. And I hope, <laughs> I really hope my clients do as well. I think they do. <laughs> One day I'm going to ask them. Um, my sound engineering powers are really useful as a superpower. Um, this is very enough about me, more about me. How smashing. Um, because I guess that, again, going back to when I started as a sound engineer and trained, in, trained by the BBC for the BBC World Service, we had to get trained on all the old tech. So quarter inch tape was a thing, mixing live with tapes was a thing. So I would be, for example, mixing packages live on air for, I don't know, the Swahili service. Um, and doing that with a massive mixing desk live on air, weirdly with a mirror over my head so that you could kind of look in front of you and up. And in the mirror, you could see the tape machines behind you and you could see when the next tape was coming to an end because a little bit of yellow tape would pop up. You'd have to, with the faders, stop it and then bring in the next tape when you saw that happen. And you'd be doing all of this remotely in reverse, looking at a mirror over your head whilst keeping control of everything around you. So I suppose... What that does is it gives you, I don't know, a resilience, a toughness, knowing you can achieve it as well. And the World Service was amazing for building confidence in audio, um, you know, knowing that you could go and test the satellite dish that you're taking out to Ghana on the roof of the World Service building at Bush House. That was pretty cool. And all of these things, again, it's context for me as well as skills. Um, and then when we went more digital, I learnt to edit in what used to be called Cool Edit Pro that everyone will know now as Adobe Audition sort of in the 90s um, and trained reporters to use it out in Africa. Um, and you just then, these skills become part of you. So when it came to me to build a studio and do voiceover as a proper job every single day, I didn't have to think about the tech side at all. I was just like, I need some of this, I need some of that. I know how to do this, so I'm going to record well. I know how to make what I do sound really nice. That stuff for me is not conscious in the way it is for people with a different background. I'm not saying what's better or worse. There's advantages and disadvantages to all of it. Um, you know, and maybe this is why I've ended up at drama school part time now, <laughs> you know, because this for me was my foundation and it means that I'm freer in running my performances and running my businesses and communicating with clients because I'm not at all worried about any of the tech side. And I feel really, really fortunate about that <laughs> and having that superpower to my name, really. Yes, I suppose if I suppose if I had a superpower, I never think of myself as having any powers that are particularly super, but if I had a superpower, it's, yes, it's knowing what the director is looking for from that side of the mic. But also, I think I'm very pragmatic, I'm very resilient, and I know from being a director that when you choose a voice, any voice, it is not a personal thing. It is simply that that voice suits that particular product or um, uh, genre or project. Yes, understanding what is going on client side that's another thing that's really useful because once you understand you're not just pleasing that director, there's a whole host of other people that are also part of the equation. That is also a really useful thing to understand. And 
I'm never phased by directed sessions which have 10 people on them. Bring it on in my mind, because I'd rather know, and, and even if it takes the full hour to do one sentence, I'd rather have all the input and try and understand things and try and get to the right end product for somebody um, than, than worry about pleasing one person. Oh, wow. That's, mm, that's quite tricky. Um, I think, I don't know if it's a superpower, it's definitely helpful. I am really good at mimicking. So I can't do um, impersonations or impressions particularly, but I did have a big client a couple of years ago. They've obviously moved on to another voiceover now. Um, but um, it was a Muslim charity and their taglines were in Arabic. So my client, um, who's fluent in Arabic, used to send me the audio clip of the tagline via MP3, actually. And I would just sit there, repeat, repeat, repeat. And then it sounded like I can speak fully fledged Arabic. Um, and I'm quite good at just mimicking people in general, um, which I think does put me in quite good standing within the industry, at least for a small percentage of it, because I get a lot of jobs, and a lot of clients saying, you know, you get like a reference video or a reference VO. Can you sound like whoever it might be? And I'm quite good at doing that. Interestingly enough, I noticed with it, I think it's a spectrum uh, kind of trait as well, not to generalise, but my son's, um, when he was little, he's autistic and he picked up very quickly an American accent from watching copious amounts of YouTube. Follow me for more parenting hacks. And... Um, and he, he's quite good at impersonating and mimicking as well. Um, so I think it's just about being able to sort of morph into different people and voices. Mine actually has nothing to do with performing and nothing to do with really anything I've necessarily learned in school or whatever, but more of a personal learning experience um, without getting too sort of deep. But I think from a very young age, I experienced quite a lot of uh, difficulty and trauma in my life um, and loss and you know I was the age of nine when I first experienced something like that and that forced me to grow up straight like very quickly um, and to gain a, a level of emotional intelligence that people other people my age wouldn't have had yet um, and I think that some people don't get until they're much, much older. Um, and that obviously has a lot of drawbacks <laughs> um, <clears throat> and a lot of uh, negative effect on your life. But I think the thing that it's given me is an awful lot of empathy um, and the ability to be very compassionate Um and also quite strong-minded and open-minded. Um, and I think when you have a job like ours, you have to be able to see things from many different angles. Um, and that's something I know I am good at. I think it's once you've done something and you think it's brilliant, do it again and do it slightly differently. Or that's the thing I think I've learned is we are there like i said earlier with us being human we are so complex there is always more than one way of doing things that you may not have thought of and i think i've learned that in life that there's always going to be a curveball thrown at you or something's going to come around the corner and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing and you've never saw that coming and okay how am i going to cope with this now and in business, that's really important as well, um, especially, like I said, when you're in a business like ours that is so up and down, you have to be very resilient. And I think having to be resilient in my personal life, um, where I've experienced a lot of loss and trauma, um, forces you to be very resilient in your working life. Um, and I think that's why I cope quite well with rejection. Although at times I do get really upset and I do think, oh, that's really, that's really gutting. I'm really, really upset about that. I'll give myself 
a day to be to wallow about it and say how unfair it is and how annoying it is because I know I could have smashed that. And then I'll go, right, okay, we've got to move on now. Like, put that behind. There is The worst thing you can do is feel sorry for yourself and wallow. And I think that's true of life and it's true of work. You have to... N- no one likes a whinge and, you know, you have to get up and get on. And I think um, that is the thing I've learned in life that has helped me to make a success of this um, and to, to be able to come straight out of university and become self-employed it was really really hard like the first couple of weeks I was uh, first couple of years sorry I did not make very much money Um, but I didn't quit and I've managed to get to a point where I am making a good living for myself and supporting myself and doing something I absolutely love so yeah, resilience, I think, is what is my superpower. <laughs> it's interesting how much empathy and other relationship building skills came up when I chatted to my guests this week, which really shows how important it is not only to be good at your job technically, but also to use what you've got to make your clients' jobs easier and be good to work with. People by people. I really believe that saying is true. As for the more technical skills you might have acquired elsewhere, Perhaps you have a copywriting background. Perfect. You'd be surprised how much you'll rely on that skill when preparing for making demos or if you have to edit scripts. Are you super organised? Amazing. You'll love filling that CRM with contacts and juggling all the admin, HR and accounts that you need to be in charge of. Or maybe you're a singer. Those breath techniques and knowing how to warm up your voice properly will help preserve your voice for longer in more testing sessions like video games or other character acting work. Do you have a medical background? You'd be a shoe in for medical explainers or e-learning. Some of that medical terminology is really difficult to get your mouth around if you're not used to it. The trick is to use what you've got to give yourself a leg up in the VO world. Join me same time next week when I'll be spilling the tea on live sessions, including some interesting stories and tips on how to get the most out of one. If you're going to be doing a national TV commercial, your Blue Yeti and a duvet is not going to cover it. In the early couple of years, my studio sounded all right, but my goodness, did it look a state. Yeah, well, we had quite a laugh at times because certain phrases in the game I had to translate on the spot. I've had loads that go wrong. I hate live directed sessions. He would do it once, he would do the taglines, and then he'd basically say, right, I'm off now, thanks, love. Thanks for tuning in, my caffeinated comrades. If this episode has sparked any questions or comments or you just want to connect, you can find my email address and social handles at KimberlyParker.com. If you haven't caught up with my other episodes, feel free to check them out and let me know what you think. You've been listening to Cup of VO. Until next time, 